my final evaluation for the evening. One thing about being the general evaluator is that you can able to look at something as the, the, the evening progresses, and you can actually watch in the background and see things that you haven't really paid attention to. So I know for everyone is when you're doing the general evaluation, try to find something that everyone is doing and make a note of it that is not something that would be part of our evaluation. For example, what I did this evening is I noted on how handshakes were being done this evening. One of the things we have to remember in Toastmasters is to do a solid handshake. And especially for the chairman, to wait till that person comes up, give a solid handshake, and then present or move yourself out of the way. That was one of the things I paid attention to this evening. And I found overall that it was good. It could be better. So we need to make sure that whoever is in charge, Toastmasters, Table Topic Masters, and especially the Chairman, make sure that you greet each and every person that comes up and shake their hand. So that was one of the things I noticed this evening. Let us start off with Mr. David Knott. David Knott, you brought along the agenda. I know you haven't done this, the, the um, Chairman's position that often, but you're getting better and better at it. What I noted, notable accomplishments that you did this evening was that when Richard was here, you moved the, or sorry, when Bob Forrest came up for his toast, you went and did a sergeant at arms job, which is he went and got the bench to make it so that there wouldn't be a disaster of having the glass fall off the, uh, the lectern. So that's the part of keeping your eye on how the, the room moves. As chairman, you keep an eye on everything. And you, if there was a position in this room for, say, let's say, closing the door that maybe the sergeant at arms hadn't done, you could always make note of it or have someone do that. It's good to keep eye contact on how the flow of the room goes. Moving on, Aiden had an excellent explanation of his timer's duties, and it was pointed out that from Dave Ritchie later on, that the explanation of the time frames, although when Richard brought it up to you, you did, you did, a, you did give a clear example of the timer's use, and I know that you haven't been up there that often, but overall, in your timers report, everything that you've done with the time so far has been bang on. So, good for you. Tony uh, McLean, with his Quizmaster's uh, introduction, it was excellent because he demanded answers when he would he's come up here. That's a forceful thing. When you're up front here, sometimes we take light of what the Quizmaster can actually do. And it's not maybe that important, or we'll skip it this week if we don't have someone on the agenda. But Tony took it to the next level, and I felt that he did an admirable job of saying to everyone that he is going to demand answers, so we all have to pay attention and listen. That was an important part, because no matter what duty we have in this Toastmasters Club, Quizmaster is very, very important, as well as any of the other duties, not to be taken lightly. Tanine came up for her humorous. One of the things that I liked about what Tanine did this evening is that even though we may have heard this joke before, Tanine still brought it across and brought in a lot of hand movements, facial gestures, all of the things that makes good humor. And that's what I really appreciated, what uh, Tanine did. She would look at the floor at certain points within the joke. She would look up in the sky. She would make you want to pay attention to where she was going with this whole joke. That's the part of being a good Toastmaster, to make sure that you do the job as best you can and bring everyone in and make sure good eye contact, which Tineen did. Richard, with his uh, table topics, he was evaluated by uh, Dave Ritchie, so I will move along from there. Moving on to the... Sorry, we had... Um, I apologize. We have to go back to our inspiration. And that was Richard Unroth. Once again, Richard Unra brought us in. We are all learning as Toastmasters to use our face and our hands and our gestures to draw the audience in. It doesn't matter whether there's five or six of us or there's going to be 10,000 of us. You still have to follow the same example. And Richard really did bring forward a lot of expression. The only thing, the only tip I have for him in this particular case, because of where he is and when it comes to his Toastmaster level, is that he did spend a bit more time behind the lectern, but then, of course, he has been taking lessons with Mr. Martin Dorner. 
oh, that was one of those jibs that, that the thing. Now, had there been a guest here, as Bob Forrest pointed out, <laughs> then people like Chuck Vanderbilt, who get shouldn't be saying a thing, shouldn't be making these little inside jokes. Off with his head. Off with his head. All right. Moving along. Bob Forrest with his many uh, educational. One of the things that we are all starting to do with Toastmasters is start to bring our game, uh, game plan up. Bob brought in something that we need to be doing, and as well, when we have guests in there, they should understand that Toastmasters sometimes is about giving toasts. And Bob brought across an extremely good explanation. He had five major points, and in each one of them, he had a little bit of humor. Something to be said about each point when it comes to giving a toast. That is important, and we need to always remember that no matter where we are, at some point or another, we're going to fall back on or be surprised by asking to be given a toast. And we will remember exactly what Bob said because he brought it across in, in a way that we would have it entrenched in our mind. Table topics. Well, as I said earlier, it was well done. Uh, you know, Dave Ritchie already um, uh, evaluated Richard Unruh on this. One of the things I'd like to add to this is one of the areas that I always found interesting about this particular table topics was that, as Bob pointed out, it brought up something personal. And what I find is that those of us that are in the arts, or those of us that want to aspire to do something and have a talent that we sit at home with, as Tony explained, it is very difficult for that person to come out and actually be critiqued because it is personal. And what Tony and how he brought it across, I thought was one of the best, as Joe said earlier. I thought you did an extremely good job because it was not about having fun. It was personal. And you did bring out something that we don't see from you very often when it comes to this. And I thought that finally there was some point by which we could say that was really well done. It's something personal. And I think Richard brought up a good theme. Sean from the previous week brought out a theme. We can all learn a lot about how to be something more when we come to our speeches. The toast, Joe Priestley brought across a new idea. Normally we would have a uh, debate of some sort. Uh, and once again, I should have made note. We did have two evaluators from the table topics. Let me briefly go over how they brought it across. David Ritchie had evaluated the odd uh, speakers. An excellent job. I would have liked to have seen a point for each of the other people. I know that you glossed over myself as well as, uh, who was a second online? It was Joe. Yes, there's always a little point that can be done. It doesn't matter what it would be. It's just good practice to be in that. And when you, worked, when, when you went on to the third one, you did have a, a lot of points of, of improvements to be done. So I think we need to balance that out between all three. That would be my point for you. Uh, Bob Forrest was uh, doing our um, even, oh, sorry, yeah, our even numbers. And he pointed out the differences about the table topic questions, which is something that I just alluded to earlier. And I thought that that is what we all needed to have a reminder of, because that is a lot of what we can do when it comes to selling ourselves as well as a product. It's about believing in ourselves and being able to be open with people. And Bob brought that out as well in his, in his evaluations. Moving on to our toast this evening. Joe did an excellent job. She brought some fun, and she did an excellent job of bringing in who the people were that were going to come up and give a toast. She did a great explanation of what they do, how they, uh, how they were going to present some ideas. It was very well organized. Congratulations, Joe. I thought that you brought up the first time that we've done this type of uh, toast mastering uh, as a toast. I think you did an excellent job of doing that. Tadine was one of his evaluated Kelly. Kelly, uh, you, you did an excellent job of bringing that up. You, once again, follow the format. You have something that you're going to, you know, positive, you the sandwich method, you had your little, you had your tip, and then you and finished off with how you felt that this was going to be. And one of the things as an evaluator, which I thought was very good on your part, was the fact that this is what you used. This is what I felt. Aiden, when he came up and did his evaluation for Martin's toast, once again, it was about very being very clear and succinct and bringing these things in and brought us back to many, many of the points that Martin had brought up about his dog. Those are the things that are important to bring us back to what was the original story. That way we would reminisce 
I'll be able to understand it. Moving along, Bob Forrest, uh, who did the evaluation for Tony. Once again, Bob is a seasoned 